This is the story of how America builds its concrete highways. Not with armies of workers wielding shovels, but with massive machines capable of laying 50-foot-wide ribbons of concrete at rates exceeding 85 cubic yards per hour, while achieving millimeter-level precision through GPS and laser guidance systems. Highway construction has become a continuous, automated ballet of steel, sensors, and fresh concrete, and the numbers behind these operations tell the story better than anything else. Every 12 to 18 minutes, a single slip-form paver produces enough concrete to fill a typical backyard swimming pool. Manufacturers offer 24-7 emergency service on some machines because downtime costs contractors tens of thousands of dollars per hour. Today, we're going inside the world of these extreme machines, tracing their journey from surprisingly humble origins in a small Ohio town to the record-breaking giants reshaping infrastructure across the globe. Understanding how far we've come requires going back to where concrete paving started, and that takes us to Bellefontaine, Ohio, in 1891. A man named George Bartholomew laid the first concrete pavement test strip on Main Street that year, and two years later, in 1893, Court Avenue became the first fully paved concrete street in the Western Hemisphere. What stands out even today is that original concrete achieved 8,000 PSI breaking strength which actually exceeds most concrete used in modern highways. That street remains in service more than 130 years later, and the American Society of Civil Engineers designated it a National Historic Landmark. Detroit, Michigan saw the first mile of concrete rural highway in 1909, with construction running from April 20th to July 4th on Woodward Avenue. $13,537 covered the entire mile roughly $1,400 per mile at the time. Building concrete roads back then meant backbreaking labor. Workers in the 1890s through the 1910s relied on shovels, rakes, and wooden screeds while horse-pulled rollers handled compaction. Progress came measured in feet per day rather than feet per minute. The Lincoln Highway changed everything when it launched in 1913 as America's first coast-to-coast -coast highway. Carl Fisher, who founded the Lincoln Highway Association, once put it this way, the highways of America are built chiefly of politics, whereas the proper material is crushed rock or concrete. That philosophy drove innovation for decades afterward. Iowa became the birthplace of the real revolution in 1947. Jimmy Johnson, an engineer with the Iowa Highway Commission, conceived an entirely new approach to paving. Instead of setting up wooden forms, pouring concrete, waiting for it to cure, and then moving the forms forward. What if a machine could continuously extrude concrete pavement as it moved? Johnson built the first pilot slip form paver that year, a modest device capable of laying concrete just three inches thick and 18 inches wide. A second model followed in 1948 that could handle six inch thick, three foot wide strips, and the concept proved sound. Commercial production began in 1955 when the Quad City Construction Company manufactured the first slip-form paver for sale. Gunter and Zimmerman, a California company founded in 1942, took things further in 1956 by pioneering the first crawler-mounted slip-form paver with automatic grade control for a project on Highway 99 near Manteca. Timing played perfectly into this development. President Eisenhower signed the Federal Aid Highway Act on June 29, 1956, authorizing $25 billion for the interstate highway system. August 2, 1956 brought the first interstate contract for 13.3 miles on what would become I-44 in Missouri, and paving began on September 26, 1956 in Kansas on future I-70. America suddenly needed highways built faster than ever before, and slip-form technology stood ready to deliver. Over 1,200 miles of slip-form paving had been completed by the end of 1964. Contractors laid the first 24-foot-wide pavement using slip-form technology on the Oklahoma Turnpike in 1963. The slip-form paver sits at the heart of modern highway construction, and understanding how it works reveals why these machines qualify as engineering marvels. These massive machines continuously extrude concrete pavement without preset forms, Concrete gets deposited directly in front of or alongside the moving paver, and a spreading auger or plow distributes it evenly across the paving width. 
Integrated electric or hydraulic vibrators operating at up to 150 strokes per minute consolidate the concrete, while an inset mold shapes it to the specified thickness and width as the machine advances. Oscillating beams, tamper bars, and devices called super smoothers finish the surface. The Gomaco GP4000 represents what today's most capable machines can accomplish. Paving widths reach up to 50 feet with depths up to 24 inches, enough to build an airport runway in a single pass. Telescoping legs widen automatically by 14 feet on the fly, and rotary-censored slew drives enable tight radius turns down to just 24 inches. Real-time ride quality monitoring ensures finished surfaces meet specifications throughout. Movement stays deliberately slow at 1 to 2.5 meters per minute, or about 3 to 8 feet. That careful pace proves essential, because the low slump concrete must hold its shape the instant the machine passes, while remaining workable enough to be molded. Vibrators push large aggregates below the surface, so finishing equipment doesn't snag them. Slipform pavers depend on an entire ecosystem of specialized equipment to function. Concrete batching plants mix the vast quantities these projects demand, with stationary plants producing 90 to over 300 cubic meters per hour, and mobile plants producing 20 to over 120 cubic meters per hour while remaining able to relocate between job sites. Large highway projects often position multiple plants every few miles along the corridor to ensure continuous supply. Dowel bar inserters place smooth steel bars across transverse joints to transfer loads between concrete slabs. Gomaco's independent dowel bar inserter handles 24 to over 40 bars per joint cycle. Improper alignment prevents joint faulting over a pavement's 20 to 40 year design life. Texture and curing machines create the safety features drivers depend on daily. Transverse tining creates grooves perpendicular to traffic using 5 inch wire tines while diamond grinding removes approximately a quarter inch of surface to create longitudinal grooves. Those grooves reduce road noise by 5 to 7 decibels and improve skid resistance by 15 to 41 percent. Curing machines spray white membrane compounds from reservoirs holding 250 to 300 gallons at up to 29 gallons per minute, protecting fresh concrete from drying too quickly. Scale tells the story of highway construction better than anything else and the numbers behind these operations deserve attention. 65 to 100 cubic meters of concrete per hour represents typical slip form paving output, translating to roughly 85 to 130 cubic yards. Crews lay 300 to 500 linear feet of 12-foot lane width every hour at that pace. Older methods can't compete. Slip form systems achieve 40 to 60 percent productivity gains over fixed form paving, which might produce 200 to 350 linear feet per day, compared to slip form operations laying 500 to 800 feet daily. New slip form pavers range from about $11,500 for basic models to over $700,000 for the most capable machines. Used Go Maco pavers typically sell for $75,000 to over $300,000 on the secondary market. Highway construction costs have climbed sharply in recent years. A 9.6% annualized increase hit in the first quarter of 2024, according to the Eno Center for Transportation. And the Federal Highway Administration's National Highway Construction Cost Index shows costs now running 3.19 times higher than the January through March 2003 baseline. Per mile costs vary widely by road type. A two-lane major road in rural areas runs about $5.34 million, while a four-lane urban highway costs eight to 10 million. Six-lane urban interstates exceed 11 million per mile, and elevated urban freeways climb past 71 million. $62.1 billion in highway formula funding went to states in fiscal year 2024, setting a new record. Texas led with over $6 billion while California followed with nearly $5.6 billion. Several companies dominate this specialized industry, each with its own history of innovation. Gomaco Corporation operates from Ida Grove, Iowa, where it was founded in 1965 and remains family-owned and privately held. The company calls itself the worldwide leader in concrete paving technology. Harold Godberson, who founded the company and passed away in 1986, developed the double oscillating screed and received President Reagan's E-Star Award in 1984 for export excellence. Gomaco's innovations changed the industry repeatedly. 
Their GT6000 curb and gutter machine arrived in 1970 and revolutionized curb production, taking output from 200 feet per day by hand to 200 feet in just 30 minutes. The dowel bar inserter followed in 1983, and the first stringless U.S. city street got paved in 1999, right in their hometown of Ida Grove. Vertgen Group operates from Vintag in Germany, with approximately 9,000 employees globally and about 3 billion euros in annual revenue. John Deere acquired them in 2017. Their SP1600 became the first slip-form paver, capable of directly paving two concrete layers simultaneously. Gunter and Zimmerman has operated from Ripon, California since 1942, manufacturing since 1947 with about 55 employees today. Their pioneering 1956 crawler-mounted slip-form paver with automatic grade control established the template for modern machines. Power curbers and power pavers, founded in 1953 in Salisbury, North Carolina, created the world's first automatic curb machine with their 55A automatic extruder. Their equipment slip formed 31 miles of railbed and 62 miles of sidewalk for the Channel Tunnel project, completing the work in just nine months from France. The move to stringless three-dimensional machine control represents the latest transformation in highway construction. Traditional slip form paving relied on physical string lines, wires stretched along the project to guide machine elevation and alignment. Trucks or workers could displace those strings, and human error in setting them affected the finished pavement. Modern systems use robotic total stations or GPS receivers to track machine position via prisms and receivers mounted on the equipment. Onboard computers compare actual position to digital design models and adjust elevation and steering automatically in real time. Precision levels have reached new standards. Laser-based sensors achieve vertical deviation of just 0.4 inches, while target systems hit 0.1 inches vertically and 0.2 inches horizontally. Kent Godberson, GoMaco's Vice President of Worldwide Sales and Marketing, described the shift this way. More contractors are seeing the benefits of a string-free job site. Three-dimensional guidance is quickly moving beyond road paving, and our contractors have successfully completed tunnel paving, slope paving, curb and gutter, sidewalk, barrier and grade preparation projects without string line. One contractor explained the practical difference. String can be hit by the workers during construction, or a truck can hit it. Technology is superior since it eliminates the human error when setting string line, which has meant eyeballing it to get the profile right. The human eye is only so good. Wade Bowman of Wartgen America sees a tipping point approaching. It probably won't be much longer until we reach critical mass with stringless machine control and it will become more mainstream. February 2021 brought four simultaneous world records on the Delhi-Mumbai Expressway in India, all set by a Vyrtgen SP-1600. The machine laid 1,280 meters of concrete in 24 hours at over 18 meters wide, the longest continuous pour on record. Coverage reached over 48,700 square meters in that same period, approximately 525,000 square feet. Total concrete placed exceeded 14,600 cubic meters in those 24 hours. Width hit 18.75 meters in a single pass, over 61 feet across. Ramesh Palagiri, Managing Director and CEO of Vyrtgen India, noted that this flagship paver had built several highways during its 20 years of operation in the country. Electrification and automation are reshaping the industry's future. The electric construction equipment market stood at $10.2 billion in 2023, with projections reaching $44.8 billion by 2030. Volvo's EC230 electric excavator demonstrated a 64% reduction in hourly carbon emissions and 74% reduction in hourly costs during a February 2024 pilot. The autonomous construction equipment market exceeded $14 billion in 2023 and should nearly double by 2032. Industry insiders suggest true machine automation is closer than many expect, describing a shift from machines that assist operators to operators that assist machines running on pre-built digital models.